Hi class. Today we're taking a look at mastering presentations and we want to specifically look at Microsoft PowerPoint. Now in previous sessions we looked at Microsoft Word which allowed us to do word processing. We looked at Microsoft Excel which allowed us to create spreadsheets and we looked at Microsoft Access to allow us to create databases. Now another program that we want to focus on is Microsoft PowerPoint in order for us to create presentations. Now, in this slide, it gives us the definitions that we have for what is a presentation. Now, although I have two definitions here, notice that they take a look at presentations from a different perspective. The first definition says that a presentation is a practice of showing and explaining the contents of a topic to an audience or learner. This definition looks at the act of presenting. It's actually explaining in order to address a topic to an audience or a learner. And that's one thing you want to keep in mind when you're creating this presentation. Who is your audience? If you're speaking to a group of five-year-olds, you cannot use words that are too big for them to understand. And when you're dealing with teenagers, you want to make sure your presentation will be captivating enough to keep them interested. Now, the other definition talks about presentation being a set of visuals prepared using special purpose software. And if you can remember from maybe your first or second form years, special purpose software is, is a software specifically for one topic. Now the topic that we're going to be dealing with is making presentations. So the software that we'll be using is PowerPoint because this software is a special purpose software designed specifically for making presentations. Let's take a look at the evolution of presentations and presentations have come a long way through history. One thing that we want to take a look at is that we had different mediums that people use in order to enhance their presentation. One such medium was a 35 millimeter projector. The 35 millimeter projector, you may have seen it maybe one of the classic movies where you'd have, for instance, people in a movie theater and then you would have this bright light being spotted from the back of the theater. Now this tool or the equipment that they were using was a 35 millimeter projector that allowed for film to be passed in front of light and as it's being passed in front of light it allowed for images to be displayed on a projected surface. Now we moved past the, project, the 35 millimeter projector to looking at the overhead projector. The overhead projector allowed for a person to place a piece of paper that had images or words that they wanted to project on this surface here. And when it was being projected on that surface or being placed on that surface, whatever was there would be projected onto another wall or onto the wall. Now this was good because you can see the images, however, you weren't able to hear a song and you wouldn't be able to have video either. Now the one that you may be familiar with, which was that the ones that we have in the lab, would be the multimedia projector. Like the name says, it allows for multiple media forms. For instance, you could display images, you could display videos, and you can also hear audio from some multimedia projectors. Now we've taken a look at what is a presentation. We've also taken a look at the evolution tools used to create effective presentations. But what is PowerPoint then? The definition that we have here of PowerPoint is that it's a closed source commercial presentation program developed by Microsoft. Now we notice the programs that we have been using Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, they're all developed by Microsoft and this program is no different. But what is the purpose of this, this particular software? This software was designed to allow a person to enhance their presentation. And how were they able to do that? If you've ever worked with PowerPoint before, or you've seen someone presenting using a PowerPoint presentation, you notice that it allowed for images to be displayed, it allowed for video, and it allows for audio that all allows for the enhancement of their presentations. Now, in talking about PowerPoint, there are several terms that you need to know, and we'll be going over these terms. Now, this slide, like I've mentioned before, is available on my Facebook page at MB Third Form, and it's also available in hard copy that I gave to most of you guys before you went off on this break. Now, if you want, you can follow via either medium, but we want to take a look at the terms you need to know relating to PowerPoint. Now, the first term is slide. What is a slide? The definition here says a slide is a page in a PowerPoint document. For instance, notice the image that I have here, a single page in your PowerPoint 
presentation. Now, this page is referred to as a PowerPoint slide. Another term that we want to be familiar with is placeholder. A placeholder is defined as anything that shows the space reserved on a slide for a piece of text or artwork. If you look carefully at the image that I have below, we have placeholder. And this placeholder is showing you two locations, one at the top and the one at the bottom. Notice within your placeholder, it has, for instance, here that says click to add a title or click to add text. These are what we call text placeholders. They're holding the place for text that you'll be inserting into your PowerPoint presentation. Now, apart from placeholders that can hold text, we also have the, in, the icons to insert different types of content. For instance, if you want to insert a table, you want to insert a chart, you want to insert a smart art, you want to insert a video, all of these can be used to, all of these can be selected in order for you to insert some piece of either artwork or video or audio into your PowerPoint presentation. Now, we've spoken about the slide and we've spoken about a placeholder. Now, what is the difference? We want to keep in mind that the slide is the page in your PowerPoint presentation, whereas your placeholders, these are holding the place for something to go into your document, whether it be text, whether it be audio, whether it be video. These placeholders are used to hold its place, whereas the slide is the page within the document. Another term that you want to keep in mind is your slide layout. Another name for your slide layout is the slide type. The definition here says that the slide layout or the slide type is the arrangement of placeholders on a blank slide in preparation for the combination of a title, text, and content, inclusive of content, is tables, images, media clips, word art, and organization charts, and other graphical elements. If we notice here in this image that I have to the side, there are different types of slide layouts. For instance, if you're doing the introductory slide, you might want to use a title slide. Now notice the placeholders are arranged in different locations for different types of slide layouts that you would be using. For example, if you're using a title slide, you'll have a larger text box for the title and a smaller one for minor notes, such as the, such as the presenter. You also have the title and content slide layout, where you'd have the title appearing at the top and whatever content, either image or text, appearing below. You have, for example, another one, the two content layout, where you're able to have a topic followed by two areas of content under the topic. Now, it depends on what you want to display, would be what slide layout you choose. A fourth term that you want to be familiar with is your design template also known as a theme for your presentation. Now, I think that you guys might enjoy working with this particular tool as there's so many different designs available from office.com. Now, what is a design template? A design template is a file that contains the styles in a presentation. It includes the type and size of bullets and font, placeholder sizes and positions, background designs, and fill color scheme. Notice that for each theme, it would carry a different font, it may carry a different color. It may carry a different graphical organization. And this allows for the enhancement of your presentation as it, as it creates a visually appealing presentation. Now, one thing I was hoping that you notice is that this particular slide came in different from the other slides. What I did to enhance the slide was to change the transition of the slide used. What are transitions? Transitions are the visual movement as one slide changes to another. If you were paying close attention, you would have seen that the slide changed in a circular display when I was changing from one slide to the other. The last display that I used was the honeycomb effect. Now this allows for a visual movement from one slide to the other. Notice there are so many different types of displays that you can use when you're making your transitions. For example, you can have none where we we'll just skip randomly from one to the next, or you can have where we we'll morph, create random bars, 
uncover, cover, and there's so many transition effects available in Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, let's talk about animations. What are animations? Animations are visual effects applied to individual items on the slide, such as graphics, titles, or bullets, rather than to the slide itself. No, although I have this image here, this is not what we talk about when we speak about animation, all right? When we, when we talk about animation in Microsoft PowerPoint, notice the different tools that I use to change, to insert the players, to insert the clear sign, and also to insert the image itself that I have here on this slide now. Notice I am changing the way the images, they appear, I've changed the way that the text appears on my page, or if I have bullet points, I can change the way that those appear. No, I'm not changing the way the slide appears. When we change the way the slide appears, that is referred to as a transition. When we look at the way that different texts, different images move within the slide, we're talking about animation. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're working with transitions and, anim and animations is that you have to keep in mind who is your audience, and you also want to keep in mind that you're not overwhelming persons or your audience with your transition or animation effects. Some people get too excited and they say, oh, I learned how to use transitions and I know how to use animations. So they want to use all the animations and all the transitions in their PowerPoint presentation. Now this may become too cumbersome for your, your audience. You want to make sure that you keep it simple, but yet still interesting. In your presentation, you may choose to include a header and a footer. Now, similar to header and footer in Microsoft Word, this is the area at the top and bottom of each slide. Now, in this area, you can add text, such as the slide number and the date of presentation. If you take a look at the first image, it shows you the slide and it shows you what you may want to include on the slide. For instance, you may want to have the date and have it autom automatically update as you print or you may have a fixed date, or you can also include the slide number, and in the footer, you may have some type of text that you may want to include. Now, the second image shows you where in the document this would show up. Notice when it's printed, you would have, for example, the page number, the text, and it would also have the date that the presentation was either printed or the fixed date that you had created. Now, the Slide Master is one of my favorite tools to use when making presentation. This particular tool allows for uniformity within your document. Now, what type of uniformity are you looking at? You're looking at text being the same. You're looking at text sizes being the same. You're looking at having uniformity in the background and in the color of your presentations. Now, you don't want, as you're jumping from one side to the other, you have a whole bunch of different things going on. You want to make sure that as you're transitioning from one slide to the next, they're within the same design, they carry the same font, to allow the reader, to, the reader of your presentation to more easily follow your presentation. Now, how does the Slide Master work? When you're in the Slide Master view, which we'll learn about later, it allows you to create customized fonts, customized backgrounds, customized font sizes that will then be applied whenever you use a particular slide type. For instance, when we look at the Slide Master tab, we have the Slide Master, which will be the first slide in, this, in the particular series. When you're using this particular tool, it will allow you to change, for instance, the type of font you use for titles, which means that every time you use this layout, all titles will have the same style. When you change the font, font sizes, bullet types that you're going to be using within the body, it will be changed for every single slide, making your life a bit easier. Instead of having to go through every single slide, slide by slide, changing the, the, the font you're using for your topic, changing the font that you're using for your, your body, as you're changing from one slide to the next, this is automatically updated once the slide master is set. Now, the final term that we want to look at is speaker notes. What are speaker notes? Like the name suggests, it's notes for the speaker. The definition that we have says that it's notes added to the presentation slide as a reference for the presenter. Now, your audience won't be able to see your speaker notes, so what is its purpose? Its purpose is to guide the presenter as they are presenting. Now, you don't want to clutter your presentations with too much words or too much content. You want to keep it as simple as possible. 
but as a human, you may not remember everything. The notes that you're going to be then using for your presentation will be kept in the speaker note section. Now, where is the speaker note section? Notice it appears at the bottom of your slide. It's in this area that you will type your notes that you'll need to reference during your presentation. Okay class, what did we learn today? We looked at what is a presentation, paying key in mind that we have the presentation as the action, and we also have the presentation as the software that we're using to create the presentation. We also looked at the evolution of presentation, looking at, for example, the 35 millimeter present, um, presentation, or we also look at the medium using the multimedia presentations. We have what is a PowerPoint, looking at it's a software design designated by Microsoft that allows us to create these presentations. And we looked at nine key terms to understanding making presentations and using Microsoft PowerPoint. Terms included when it was a slide, looking at this is a, your page within your document. We looked at what was placeholders. These are placed reserved for either text or image or other types of content. We looked at the slide layout or choosing the slide type that was most appropriate for your presentation. And also choosing a design template, which was your different themes that were um, designed for your presentation. We looked at the difference between a transition, which is the way the page changes, as compared to animation, which is the way the graphics or text changes within your document. We also looked at the header and footer of your document, the area appearing at the top or bottom of your document. We looked at the slide master, which allows us to control the overall effect and design within our presentation. And lastly, we took a look at what are speaker notes, which are notes for the speaker to guide his or her presentation.